busy day. Off to the station, off to shop. Busy, busy, never stop. Mop the floor, tying the clothes. Dear, dear, blow your nose. Busy day, tick tock. Busy day, six o'clock. Six o'clock, dinner time. Thank goodness for Jell-O Instant Pudding. Yes, thank goodness for Jell-O Instant Pudding. The terrific busy day dessert you can make at the very last minute. See how quick and easy. Just add it to cold milk and beat it up. That's all. By the time you're ready to eat it, it's all ready for you. Jell-O Instant Pudding, made by the famous Jell-O folks. So creamy, so nourishing, so delicious. No other instant pudding is quite the same. Stock your shelves with all seven flavors. The good, good, busy day dessert. Jell-O Instant Pudding. Back to the star of our show, Johnny Carson. Well, back twice today. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome for Jello Instant Puddings. The second half of Do You Trust Your Wife? Mrs. Zetwak down in New Orleans uh, missed our scramble letter game, so be sure and get your card in the mail today, if possible, because the next call could just as easily be to you. Bill, who's our uh, second couple to try for the $500 today? Johnny, next we have a man who is a pitchman. Pitchman. Let's welcome for Jell-O Instant Pudding, Johnny and Adele oh. McConnell. Adele, how are you? What do you have? What kind of a hat do you call that, Adele? Mm -hmm. Is there a name for it? It's, it's a very pretty hat. Jo Bill said, Johnny, that you're a, a pitchman, right? That's right, Johnny. Is a pitchman the connotation I think it is, the old-time pitchman? Maybe you better fill us in a little bit. Well, um... Uh... Let's say, for instance, you go into a five and ten, you want to buy a tube of toothpaste. Yeah. And you see a big crowd, you hear a lot of laughter, so you walk over and you start to listen. The next thing you know, you're walking out of the store with a whole bag full of kitchen gadgets, but no toothpaste. <laughs> That's a pitch. Bring you right in and sell you, huh? That's right. Adele, was John a pitch man when you, uh, when you married him? Yes, he was. Uh, let's see now, we've been uh, married 17 years. And he's, yes, yeah, he's okay. a pitchman of uh, 18, and uh, we... I guess we've been a pitchman all his life. Is that right? <laughs> you, have, you, have, you have a family? You have any children at home? Yes, we have two, ah, boy good. and a girl. Good. Uh -huh. Expect more, do you? Uh, we'd like to have another one. <laughs> well, keep pitching. That's the only way to do it, I guess. John, how did, how did you meet Adele? Huh? <laughs> what? Sounds like a Dick Clark show for my next number. Uh-huh. How, uh, how did you meet Adele, John? Were you... Uh, well, Johnny, I was doing a pitch in uh, a 5 and 10 over Newark, and I was selling a uh, vegetable slicer, you know? Yeah. So uh, I got my crowd together, and I'd done the whole pitch, and I was just about to ask for the money. And all of a sudden, somebody in the back said, I bought one of them, and mine don't work like that. I'm not a bit happy about it. So I leaned out, and I said, you bought one, you're not happy? I got 10,000. Imagine how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> Here's somebody who's really unhappy, huh? So she started to laugh and everything, and uh, I showed her how to use it, and then she came back in the store, and I asked her how the machine was and everything. We had coffee together. We got friendly, and... Uh, I guess I did about the best picture I ever did because we were married 16 years. Hey, you sure did. did. <laughs> what's, what's the highlighting, uh, hot item that you're selling now, John? Uh, I'm selling a uh, potato stretcher. A potato stretcher? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> What's that, for people who like tall potatoes? Or John, what? I just happen to have one right here in my pocket. You know, a pitchman's always prepared. Ah. You wouldn't have a potato by any chance, would you? We have a couple of potatoes left out from a cookout they had on the Dick Clark show a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> Cindy, would you bring a potato up? You fascinate me when you do these pitches, you fellas. And I thought maybe you might get a kick out of seeing this. Is that's that... a real nice potato, isn't it, John? Yes, it certainly is. Let me right. Oh, this one here, yes. That's, that's a... <laughs> uh, uh, here's the here's way you How would you do your pitch thing. now? Okay. Well, you see... The number one thing is, you always take and you peel your vegetable. Now, this is for a woman that likes to be a little bit of a fancy cook. Now, what you do is you take and you peel the vegetable all the way around. See, once you get your vegetable peeled, you take that little screw and you put it right in the center of the vegetable and you start to wind it in. Now, when the little screw starts to take hold, you're all ready. Yeah. You hold it in an upright position, now you start to wind it. Mm -hmm. See, you can do this with a potato, a carrot, a beet or radish, a cucumber, a turnip, a pineapple, a rutabaga, anything with a hard center. As a matter of fact, you women out there can cut a bushel of onions and never shed a tear. Now, you see, that comes apart like a little spring. Now, people say it's nice, but what do you do with that? Well, here, you use it as a garnish. You lay that along a roast. You let it taste in brown and gravy. Or you take both ends, bring it together this way. You deep fat fry it, it comes out golden brown. As a matter of fact, it's getting brown already. You can see how fast it cooks. Some night, you... <laughs> well, some night you have a lot of company. You only got one potato. You stretch it out. The more company you have, the further out you stretch it. <laughs> they eat it fine. If they don't, push it back and eat it yourself. <laughs> You have to start it over now if you were to do it. See, now you take it out and you start from oh, the other end. I have to. Do we have time for me to do this? Just start it right from the other end. That's Put it. it. Just wind it in. Give it a chance to get threaded. That's right. Now just hold it up straight and just wind it around. 
Like that, huh? That's the boy. Mm. Round and around you go. That's the idea. Mm. But I did it. Look at that, huh? For my first selection. <laughs> hey, I wanted it. Ain't that great? Tell you what, I have to do a little pitching right now myself. I don't think I can pitch quite as well as you can. How? Tell me, I'm going to talk about Jello Instant Pudding. Suppose that they ask you to do a a, a pitch for Jello Instant Puddings. You were going to do the commercial on television. How would you do it? Would you give us a short idea? Jello Instant Pudding. Yeah. Well, I got one that might fit in there. Okay, how uh, do you go? Friends, let me ask you a question. Every time that you and your neighborhood play hide-and-go-seek, is your child always the first one caught? Is he the best checker player, but without a doubt the worst baseball player in the neighborhood? Uh, is he the kind of a fellow that's a water boy on a football team instead of the quarterback? If so, there's definitely something wrong. Stop and think for one minute. Why'd you give that boy for dessert? What? There's your answer. Why not give him what thousands of boys reading all over America and enjoying? Pudding. Why? You say it's too hard to make, it takes too long? Well, 30 years ago, this might have been a problem. Now, I remember my grandmother, she used to walk two miles to get a piece of chocolate. And if it was a hot day on the way home, it was half melted, so was she. Then she'd go home and take a grater and she'd start to do something like this. By the time she got down to the bottom of it, you'd have fingernails, knuckles, nail polish, everything in the pudding. <laughs> take you about an hour to eat a spoonful. Well, here today, thanks to Jell-O Winston pudding, all you do is open up a box, add a little cold milk, and you beat. And in about one minute, you got the finest, tastiest, temptiest, I have feeling the great you've ever tasted in all your life. Do it. Oh, John, I hate to follow you. Huh? A hard fit to follow. But seriously, relax for one minute. We'll play the game. But right now, I would like you gals to take a look at something right over here. Because this is the first time that you're going to see a really delicious, genuine ice cream pie that needs no freezing. It's uh, firm textured, cuts perfectly every time, keeps in the refrigerator, and you can make it tonight with Jell-O Instant Pudding. It's just as easy as this. All you need is one cup of milk, one pint of any flavor ice cream, and of course, one package of any flavor Jell-O Instant Pudding. Now you soften the uh, ice cream with the milk like we've already done here. This happens to be chocolate ice cream, but of course you can use any flavor that you go for. And then you simply add one package of Jell-O Instant Pudding, any one of the seven flavors that you like. Then you simply blend well and immediately pour into a, a pie shell or a graham cracker crust. You chill for about one hour in your refrigerator. Why don't you try it today? It's that simple. Sensational ice cream pie. Made in minutes with the fabulous magic of Jell-O Instant Pudding. It has no knuckles. And it has no knuckles in it. John, we're going to talk about first names of famous people. Do you want to trust yourself or trust Adele on this one? I think I'll trust myself on this one. Okay, McKinley, a United States president. What was his first name? Uh, McKinley. William. William, William McKinley. McKinley, right. Okay, composers, famous composers. Music? Yeah. Uh -huh. You want to take a shot? I'm trying. I'm trying. Right. <laughs> Rhapsody in Blue and Porgy and Bess are major works of this American composer. Name him. Rhapsody in Blue and Porgy and Bess. And George Gersh. George Gersh. <laughs> what? <laughs> looking at him for? I always like these little sights. George Gersh. <laughs> <laughs> How about famous rivers? Famous hey. rivers worth seventy-five dollars. I think I'll trust myself, John. One of the principal rivers of Europe forms the border between Switzerland and Germany. Name it. Uh, Switzerland and Germany. Mm-hmm. Uh. Forms the border between Switzerland and Germany. Oh my goodness. Switzerland and Germany. Hurry up. I have to ask for a guess here or an answer. Time is up. I was going to say that. No, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. It's the Rhine River. Rhine. I knew you knew it and couldn't think of it. Look, you did fine anyway. John, thanks for that demonstration. Well, 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 well. Okay, well, now it's time once again for today's big $500 a day question. And here, returning for the fifth day in a row to try for $2,500, a resident surgeon, Dr. Alan Birkenfield, and his wife, Virginia. Virginia, how you beat it, baby? I've asked you ever since you've been on the show. Do your patients watch this show from the hospital? Yes, they do, Johnny. And yeah. as a matter of fact, I lost a patient because of it. <laughs> nothing serious that I hope that you mean that way. What do you mean? You no, nothing very serious, but... Was the show one... that bad or what? <laughs> no, no. Huh? But there's one old man that's uh, 
Oh, he's about one year younger than the General Sherman tree, and he's pretty set in his ways by now and yeah. pretty suspicious. And uh, the other day he said, well, I'm not going to let that Birkenfield operate on me anymore. He said, I just don't trust show people. <laughs> <laughs> That's delightful, because you've been on television. That's right. Okay, today's winners you're going to compete with now. With a quiz total of $150, Johnny, the Nieder Kitchener. Welcome back. Uh. And Alan, the category today for $500 is about <clears throat> Europe. Europe. Now, do you want to trust yourself or trust your wife? It's business, please. It's I trust you. You'll trust friend. yourself. All right, Alan, how about you? I mean, on Europe. I mean. I'll trust myself. You'll trust yourself? Okay. Stand by, and in just one minute, we'll play Do You Trust Your Wife on the subject of Europe for $500. But right now, I'd kind of like to have you make a little note for me, just in case you run into the same situation that a friend of ours did. You know, her grocer stocked only a few of the delicious Jell-O instant flavors. So, today, do me a favor and do yourself a favor. Make a note of these seven sensational flavors, and if your grocer doesn't have them, you tell him to get them, because sooner or later, you're going to want to try all seven Jell-O instant puddings. First of all, there's velvety chocolate, <coughs> luscious butterscotch, tangy lemon, rosy strawberry, tempting banana, creamy coconut, and the old favorite, smooth vanilla. All of them made in minutes with no cooking. Jell-O Instant Pudding. <laughs> Odin, it's yeah. for $500. It's on Europe, and here is the question. 22 countries of Europe are republics. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the republics of Europe. In other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? Yes. Are you ready? Ready. Go. Uh, Helsinki. Uh, so, uh, countries of Europe. Yes. Finland, uh, Switzerland. Uh, Germany. Okay, the 10 seconds is up. We'll be right back to you, Odin. Can we have the sound on over here? Alan, can you hear me all right? I can, Johnny. All right, it's on Europe for $500. Here's the question. 22 countries of Europe are republics. Within 10 seconds after I say go, name as many as you can of the republics of Europe. In other words, the countries of Europe not ruled by monarchs. Do you understand the question? The 21 republics of Europe. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Go. Portugal, France, Germany, Switzerland, Austria, Hungary, Bulgaria, Czechoslovakia, Austria, Poland. Uh... <laughs> I don't believe we'll have time to read all the 22 countries of Europe that are republics, but Bill, what is the score? Well, Johnny, Odin Niederkirchner in a good try had one correct. Dr. Alan Birkenfield had nine correct. Our champions again, the Birkenfield. Congratulations. Odin? He beat me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can beat him dueling, though, I'll bet you. Sorry, but uh, we enjoyed having you today. Sorry you missed out on the big money, but it was a pleasure having you. Yeah, Thank you so good. much. Doctor, you and Virginia will be yeah, back right. tomorrow, right? Yeah. How much do you have now? $2,500. $2,500. Okay, tomorrow you'll be going nice. for $3,000. Thanks for being with us. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Goodbye. <laughs> this portion of you and you trust your wife has been brought to you by Jell-O Instant Pudding. That quick, quick, good, good, busy day dessert. Remember, watch Johnny Carson as he stars this week on the Jack Farr Show. Remember, too, tomorrow, another phone call in our new Scrambled Name Game. Send your name, address, and telephone number to White, Box 249, ABC TV, New York 23, New York. And join us again at the same time tomorrow for Johnny Carson and Do You Trust Your Wife? This has been ABC Television. Wyatt Earp avenges the death of two Indian friends tonight. Hostile Indians set a trap in tonight's Broken Arrow drama. Watch ABC Television Network.